Hello, I'm here today with Frederick Blaine. He's an author and fellow computer forensicator and has a lot of experience in the education sector. He's appeared on TV shows. He's also uh, an author of a new book that came out recently and has several more in the works. And he's coming on the show today to talk a little bit about that. Fre Frederick, thanks for coming on. It's a pleasure. Thanks uh, for having me. So can you tell people, um, I have a teenager and a lot of parents today are concerned about their kids' use of smartphones and devices. What are some of the, the issues you raise in your book and what is the name of your book? Well, the name of the book that you brought me on to discuss today is Cyber Traps for the Young, which came out actually about five years ago. It was the first of three Cyber Traps books that I've done so far. Okay, what's the, the, the big message you have to parents about devices and the books? Well, the overarching message of Cyber Traps for the Young was that we have given kids tools now that allow them to become perpetrators of crimes that they never could become before. And so this imposes, I think, a burden and a duty on parents to do a better job of understanding how their kids are using these devices. And that's what I tried to do. So there's been a lot of news and rumblings about Facebook and mm -hmm. usage of no, kids' God. data and whatnot. <laughs> do you have any thoughts on that? Well. I think that, you know, I have a lot of thoughts on it, actually, <laughs> if, you, if you read the book. But um, I will tell you that the overarching issue is that the apps and the games and so forth on Facebook are designed to do one thing, and that is to collect data from the people who use it. This was a huge issue in the 2016 election, as many of us realize. And that's a particularly stunning example. But just on a day-to-day -day basis, a lot of information is being collected about kids. Yeah. So what would you recommend that uh, parents do to, to make sure their kids aren't falling into trouble? Well, I think that the most important thing for parents to try to do, and I know how difficult it is because I'm the father of four boys myself, is to delay the use of devices as long as possible. There's a lot of push from peers, from magazines, from television shows, even from schools to get kids using devices as soon as possible. My advice is exactly the opposite. Slow it down. Mm -hmm. I, I recently uh, purchased a new router and I'm pretty impressed with the Orbi. Mm -hmm. uh, it allows you to set time limits on usage to restrict sites and yeah. you basically assign the devices to each child. So if one child does something well, you can reward that one child uh, with the other more one time. doesn't. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> right. But uh, it gives you some way to put a tether on. But it was interesting when I first put the tether on, you know, the pushback I got about the notion of just not right. having unlimited internet. Uh, well, that's the thing. I mean, for kids, because they're growing up as digital natives and immersed in this world of technology, they view it the same way they view food and water, which is to say they can't live without it. And I understand that, believe me, I've been buried in tech for years, like yourself, right? We, we're tech-oriented guys. But I think the thing is that kids rely on parents to teach them values and to teach them balance in what they do. And as difficult as it is for parents, um, I think that that is a critical lesson for kids to learn. I will say, and your experience is a good one, that the tech companies are finally making it easier for parents to monitor what their kids do, to impose reasonable limits. Um, I, I think that we're seeing some real progress. Yeah, I, um, I learned recently that you can subscribe to extra service through Verizon mm -hmm. that will allow you to turn off data Right. Restrict data uh, right. on a daily basis if required. You can do it minute by minute if yeah. you want, honestly. But Lee, let me add one thing because I think that this is an important message in cyber traps for the young. That ironically, because a lot of the problems arise out of communication devices, the best solution for this is actually more communication. Mm -hmm. Creating a context for your kids, helping them to understand why you want to do this. Uh, why it's important that they have balance. Mm -hmm. Those kinds of conversations are vital, I think, for helping kids really appreciate uh, why you're doing what you're doing.
Great. Well, um, before we wrap up, do you have another book coming out you want to talk about? Yeah, I appreciate the plug. I'm actually in the process now of writing two books uh, for Beacon Press up in Boston. The first of them is called The Rise of the Digital Mob, which is an attempt to understand how the, the interweaving of digital communication and political changes have affected how we communicate with each other. So why we've gotten more partisan, for instance, why there's so much trolling online, uh, what, what, is, what is technology doing to facilitate misogyny, racism, and so forth. And then the second book that I'll be writing is called Hashtag Tech Sick Masculinity, which is a look at the impact of technology on men and maleness. Great. Well, thanks for being on the show today. I it's really a real pleasure. It. Thank you so much. Yeah.